Champagne has iconic status, not only here in France, but globally. The sparkling wine produced exclusively in France's Champagne region dates back centuries. And though it is still widely associated with luxury and fine dining, today producers have to strike the delicate balance between mixing the know-how of the past with innovations better adapted to the future. While champagne houses across the country are increasingly placing their bets on organic, even vegan champagnes, and at the forefront of some of these efforts is the Maison du Val le Roi, which is a still family-run producer founded in 1859. Today, its director general, Julien Duval le Roi, joins me for a perspective. Thank you so much for coming on the program today. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, so I'll start with a question that many non-French viewers, uh, including myself, have often asked. What makes champagne different than other sparkling wines? The terroir, the soil. We have the specific balance between a uh, long time history of uh, working on, on, a, on a soil. It's very septentrional. We are in the north of France. So cold weather and the know-how of how to, to use this poor soil at the beginning into what, uh, as you say, makes the best sparkling wine today. And what do you think, again, I, I kind of want to delve into to some of the questions that I asked when I, when I first started trying champagne. What do you think are some of the most important champagne etiquette rules? Are there things that it should never be paired with? What's the best way to pour it? Uh, so, so, some of, some of the, the best etiquette for drinking it. Well, the, 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 the main uh, issue is uh, drinking it cold enough. You, you have to, to, to have it in an ice bucket for 20 minutes before serving it, and it will save, uh, save everything. Uh, also, the, the glass you use is, is quite important, and the time of the day would be appropriate uh, all, all, all day long. Uh, that's not a, an, an issue for us. And for, for pairing, uh, sal salty is, of course, uh, better than, uh, than sugar dish. Okay, and Julien, so I want to turn to something a bit more serious because champagne, of course, isn't all pleasure and luxury. Sometimes politics does seep into it. Earlier this year, Russia passed a law forbidding the use of the Russian word for champagne on imported bottles. Now, that caused outrage here in France, as I'm sure you know. What is your take on that decision, and where do things currently stand? Well, we have an interprofession that is trying to, to solve all those legal issues. And they, they tried diplomatically to, to put uh, some pressure on, on Russia. We, we had to put, in fact, sparkling wine on our bottle, and the Russians, uh, Russian producer have the right to put champagne on their bottle. So the idea was to do um, no shipping in Russia for, uh, for quite a time in order to discuss and, and push our ideas in order to defend the appellation. Why was that Russian decision such a big deal for French champagne producers? Well, champagne is made only in Champagne. That's, that's the main idea. So that's not only in, in Russia. We have the same uh, debate in, uh, in, the U, in the US. Uh, in the United States, you have some producer calling their sparkling wine Champagne. So the, the, our job here in Champagne is to protect the name Champagne, which, as you say, is uh, a reference to, to the tradition that uh, we make sparkling wine in Champagne. Okay, and Julien, let's turn now perhaps to your champagne uh, house. If I'm correct, at least one thing that distingu distinguishes your company from others is that it's one of the few remaining independent kind of family firms, uh, and of course in competition with much larger champagne giants. What's it like navigating this world as a small family business? What are some of the major challenges that you face? Ah, we, we, we do only champagne. You have some major company, as you say, that are in big groups and they are doing champagne, they are doing wines, they are doing cognac and, and so forth, so much more. And they own their distribution system also. We do only champagne and as you said, we are family owned. What, um, the, 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 the chance for us is that we can react quickly and uh, in the pandemic times that uh, we have been facing, that was a very good thing in order to get all the information that we have and project uh, in the future in the, the better way. And I was going to ask you, you mentioned uh, the, the pandemic. Um, it's been a hard year in France for, for champagne producers. Um, for first, the pandemic and then the big freeze earlier this year. Uh, have you had to adapt your, sale model, your sales model to either of these two crises? Exactly. But it's not specific to us and it's not specific to France. We, we, we work mainly on the on-trade market, restaurants, hotels, 
catering company, and they all suffer, not only in France or in Europe, but also in the world. And so we had to to adapt, to react. First, we to protect, of course, all uh, our people, and then to to be able to sell also to new customers. And so we have developed also more customers on the off-trade market, going back to supermarkets, uh, where we haven't been for, for a while. Okay, Julian, perhaps as a last question, I know that you're, you've also kind of set yourself apart by focusing on vegan or, or, and, and organic champagnes. Uh, can you talk more about that? Do you think that sustainable development is kind of the future of champagne? That's the future for, for champagne sustainable. We, we have some, uh, since the Grenelle de l'Environnement in France, we implement uh, many things regarding environment. Uh, we have uh, champagne that has uh, the accreditation, uh, haute valeur environnementale. It's a certification. We have to follow 150 criteria. Champagne has been developing um, not only for the agriculture, but also reducing the, 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 the weight of the bottle. So we have a better uh, carbon, uh, bilan carbon. So all those implementation um, in the past and now for the future, it's no herbicide. That's a big thing for all champagnes, not only us, but only in a few years, champagne will get rid of all herbicide. So we are pioneer in the wine regions in the world in order to do a better agriculture and to, to think about how to, to have less impact on the environment. Uh, okay, Julien, unfortunately we have to keep it there. Thank you so much for your time for coming on the show today. Thank you very much.